Okay, Redina Medley. Medley. How you say? How do you say your name? Say your name. Redina Medley, like a medley of songs. That's an unusual name. The whole thing is unusual. You better believe it's called. I like to say unique. Well, how did you get that name? Is it did your parents name you that, or what did you come upon it yourself? What happened? No, it was somewhat of an accident. But you know, according to the universe, there are no accidents. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I was told. My grandfather wanted to name me Virginia, but he was not articulate. <laughs> and, and so when he wait, 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 hold on. What do you mean he's not articulate? He was not that. He was not. I mean, he he was. He had somewhat of what you might call a southern accent, but mm. with a, a a slow tongue. He had several uh, impediments and a southern dialect. Okay. Okay. And when he was explaining to the nurse, when he was trying to give her my name, the name he wanted me to be called, Virginia, mm. she thought he was saying Regina. Uh -huh. That's the best that she could do. And this is early 50s, 1953. Uh -huh. So, Wait, I'm just where was your father from originally? But was he grandfather? My mother's um, father. So, so your grandfather named you? Yes. Where, where was he from? He was Mississippi. Okay. Yeah, he no, was from uh, the area of uh, Sugarloaf. They call it Shaquela. But but black folks know it as people from East St. People in East St. Louis. By the way, we're in East St. Louis, Illinois. Mm -hmm. The people in East St. Louis, the majority of them born before a certain date or time period, would say Sugarloaf. Mm -hmm. So he came up from from Sugarloaf up to to East St. Louis. To East St. Louis. Okay, right. that was your, that was your grandfather. Right. Yes. And and he birthed. So let me say this, and I'm hesitating because he was my mother's stepfather, okay? Okay, but he's the one that named you. Right, okay. so when she, he, my mother had one girl before me, and she had three boys, and he said, if the next one is a girl, may I, can I name her? And mm -hmm. she said, sure. And he said, I want her to be named Virginia, mm -hmm. okay? And so when he gave the nurse my name, mm -hmm. she thought he was saying Regina. Mm. But if you look at the typewriter, or the D and the G, she mm. accidentally punched the D instead of the G. And so, Regina means queen, mm. and so I like to say unique queen. Really? Yes. Well, I guess they say the universe does do work in mysterious ways. Mysterious ways. Okay, and then, I, then the last name? My maiden name was Scott, mm. but my married name is Medley. And I love it. I love Redina Medley. I love the two words together. And it sounds very good. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, I like the, the melody, you know? But well, why would you like the medley? Of, uh, well, why would you like the medley of the melody? I mean, uh, is, 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 your, is your field in that kind of field? Does it fit you? What sure. Is? And both have, like, R six letters. Mm -hmm. R-E-D-I-N-A. M-E-D-L-E-Y. So six, okay. six and six is 12. Mm -hmm. One and two is three. Three is, a, three is supposed to be a, an artistic number, very artistic people, you know, loquacious and mm -hmm. all the rest of that stuff. Right. And, and, and I am an artist, however you wouldn't think that a Capricorn would be much of an artist, you know what I'm saying? Why would you think that? I'm just saying. I'm Why just saying. Why are you just saying? You know, you, you know the definition, what they give as a description, the modifier for a Capricorn? I know a lot about Capricorns. You don't want to ask me because then we, we get into some areas <laughs> you don't want to talk anyway, about. Anyway, and the NT. Tell, tell, tell me the modifiers for, for the Capricorn that you that you use about to tell me I interrupted you. I'm going to go with my energy. Personally, I feel that. Now, I know a lot of Capricorns. You know, I taught at Lincoln Senior High School in East St. Louis, and we had maybe about eight Capricorns in the building, mm -hmm. and they were all women. Those that I know. I don't know if we had any men. I'm talking about the Capricorn women, but most most of them were like teacher-like. You know, that strict, stern teacher. You know, uh, very uh, uh, what would you would call it, dignified or firm. Mm -hmm. And so. I've never, I've never liked, I've never liked that teacher image for myself. Mm -hmm. I love the artist's image for myself. Mm -hmm. I believe I, I carry more of that archetype. And, and not only that, I think most of the, uh, the teacher image is more of a superficial image versus uh, an authentic image. Mm -hmm. You know, real down to earth. You know, we, uh, you carry a different energy when you're down to earth mm -hmm. and you're real. The the divine, the energy can flow through you better when you're not carrying airs. 
Mm. So I always, um, not always, but the majority of the teachers, and in particular those who are considered English teachers or mm. speech teachers, and I was in the language arts department, you know, so, and it wasn't that I was uh, prejudiced against them, I just didn't like, even before meeting them, I didn't like that image that so many teachers carry because they seemed like they had that uppity, bougie kind of attitude. Well, back then, it wasn't that a, uh, I don't want to say uppity, bougie, but wasn't that, was, wasn't that a feel that people respected with the nurses, uh, Much teachers, definitely. Uh, definitely. whatever, so you had some definitely. difference, no? When you have teachers in the community and you have doctors in the community, different ones in the community who are down to earth and love all the people and concerned about the community, and you can just see that they, they, they don't see themselves as being above you, that's one kind of image. That's a beautiful, wonderful, uh, spiritual, real spiritual image. But when you have those who walk around and you can sense that they have their head up in the air and they're walking like peacocks and all that kind of stuff, that's false pride. Well, isn't there, isn't there a class of people, I want to say, I shouldn't say, I don't know how to say it, but isn't that like, I'm not, it's not the same, but don't you have that any place, like like a bully would, not a bully would be that, but a, a bully is a certain kind of person, a humble person, a certain kind of person. So you have all these people anyway, so they there's, there's They're different thing. archetypes. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, for sure there's a time and a place to carry those. Mm. We've created times and places to, to act those different archetypal energies, but I don't think that, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't think that because of our history and what we're going through and what we need in our communities, mm -hmm. I don't think that's, that's a good place, that's not a good fit for what we call a traditional black community. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're all on what you call the heel, because most communities have their little outskirts, mm -hmm. those little pockets, mm -hmm. some might be called, uh, what do you call them, the, um, mm -hmm. Well, we have one that's called the heel. So we expect, we say, okay, they're on the heel. They live the, on the, the heel. They're like the fringes of the suburbs. Something like a suburb. Oh, wait a second. Now, 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 now I'm confused. Are you saying the heel means the fringes of society? Because suburbs is not the fringes. The, the suburbs are like the, uh, the hoity-toities of the society. Right. So which one do we talk about? Well, I'm talking about the heel that in this area. Okay. In, 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 right. Right, East St. Louis area. All right, so you had some pockets where, of East St. Louis where the blacks, like the hub of the black community. Then the more you moved out from that, you had pockets of what you might call Sididi or the bougie or the, okay. you know, those who um, consider it because you have a little money, you can move up. There's nothing wrong with that expanding or moving up or whatever, but I'm saying when you're in operating with your people and really for the cause, if you're not what you call down to earth, we feel that and we sense that and we don't see you as being as real as, um, you know, when you have that that air or the bougie attitude, we don't see you as being real or we might, we may not trust you. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, um, you, you say that, you, you know, well, you, you stated that you came of you came into being in the 50s, and I guess you came of age in the 60s. But around about that time, you know, you had some like Lorraine Hansberry's Raising in the Sun. And one of the, one of the things about that, interestingly you know, my, my grandmother, when she was much older, she was in the Senior Citizens Club, and she had a big argument with them mm -hmm. because she said that they, that family should have stayed in the community and built a community. But as she's had other people say, well, I need to move out of the community. Not, it wasn't particularly violent, but just move out of the community mm -hmm. to be moving on up kind of thing. Right. So, so what do you, how do you apply that to what you was just saying? Is that how do I apply that. Is, is, we, is you same? know, we started off by talking about the energy of the teachers inside the building, and I was talking about the Capricorn, mm -hmm. the energy of the Capricorn. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I said I don't follow that in terms of being a uh, strict Capricorn, even though I'm January 6th, I'm not on the fringes or anything. Um, but I just don't see myself as what I would consider a true, carrying the energy of a true Capricorn. Well, you know, back to numerology, you know, six is six is the uh, education number, mm -hmm. like you know, like like that. But also, I guess I wanted to ask you if you're going to stay with. Let's stay with the number, numbers for for just a brief brief second. Um, not numbers, astrology. I mean, you talk about Capricorn, but what's your? Do you know your rising sign? No, that's, no. A, that's, that's usually the face of no, what you no. are. I I I have looked at it but I don't remember it oh, okay. you know what I was looking at what I tell you what I'm more interested in 
what I'm supposed to be working on in this lifetime. Okay. And so when I look at astrology, I want to know what am I supposed to my responsibility, my purpose. Mm -hmm. One of the things in, to in terms of weakness especially, mm -hmm. what is it that I should be working out? Mm -hmm. What's my lesson? Mm -hmm. My lessons too, dealing with, uh, one is dealing with being non-judgmental. And even in the conversation now, as you can hear, there's some judgment. I was about to say, isn't that difficult, especially for someone, I, I find it very difficult for people to, who are, I don't want to say cosmopolitan, but people people who have a lot of influences hitting off them all the time, they're usually less judgmental than if you was in an insulated community. Mm -hmm. I would consider East St. Louis an insulated community in, in a certain certain sense. You understand? You know, even though it's migration came here, it was still the, that type is insulated. So that's a big challenge. That's a big, a lot of uh, different le levels and dimensions and aspects of judgment. You know what I'm saying? There's so many aspects of it. Um, you know, I can. But which aspect are you working on? I'm working on the aspect very similar to what I just said. I'm, tr I'm, I'm working on not being judgmental. Now, when I think about being non-judgmental, I also believe or think if I don't see anything, let's say if I, you know, the concept of just be mm. and just see beauty, mm. you know, no thing, no modifiers connected to the things and just operate from, I would say, love and peace and beauty, you know, that kind of Buddha stuff. Mm -hmm. Then that would help my energy and my frequency and I'll be able to rise to another level, upgrade my frequency and, um, and tap into more of what I call the divine uh, energy and be able to utilize it in my, uh, in my growth and graduation from this 3D existence. Well, up until now you've been talking about that Pokemon, but is there any, do you see, do you see a vision at the end? Or I want to say at the, the, the light at the end of the tunnel, but do you see, you know, do you, is it manifesting? As you, as you get older, is it manifesting more? I mean, are you feeling it's, it or it's, seeing it's it or sensing it? It's definitely manifesting more because uh, even as a, a child, I see where certain things used to disturb me or might get emotional. I've never been a very, very emotional person, but the slightest emotion, I, I'm divorcing myself, you know, from emotions, especially what you call the lower emotions, the anger, doubt, blame, uh, frustration, depression, you know, those, and fear, fear. Mm -hmm. So I've literally been working on those to get to a level of, we call courage and willingness, you know, those. And then the higher ones, I, I am uh, developing peace, more peace in my life. That's one of the reasons I quit my job at 49 quit that job so I wouldn't have to operate under certain mandates that kept me uh, frustrated at all. And instead of working for somebody else, working for myself, dealing with that whole package, the package of enlightenment, you know, learning how to be more of a, a divine spirit and holding that frequency in place. So that's one of the other missions that I'm on holding that frequency in place. So if I get rid of the, the emotional issue, uh, judgmental, then I have more space in all of my being to work with the uh, that frequency, locking it in so everybody who meet me can benefit from it, so the community can benefit from it by me just being here. Mm. I want to end it here and go someplace else, but before I do, let me just ask you this. Because it's, it's, it's what's called a stock question, or that comes from what all you've been saying, on a percentile or with some some sort of scale, how close are you uh, towards that goal that you're talking about? Of en enlightenment. Yeah. You know, I would say if I had to judge, there's that word again. So if I had to really assess myself, I would say I may have to do one more lifetime. Okay. I'm no, 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 you can't cheat that much with it. I'm saying I'm, I'm right gonna, now. I'm going okay. to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say this. If I continue working the way, because I, I do work with individuals and I have some practices that I engage in, and I can feel the effectiveness of stuff, okay? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't get sick, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I do certain things. I, I uh, make sure that I eat relatively healthy, mm -hmm. okay? I... Uh, think positive. When I start working on this, it's not like I had a whole lot of debris 
or, or, or toxins to eliminate. So I can tell even, hey, as a, as a little girl or my mother, one of my mother's 11 children, that I carried a stronger frequency. I knew that. It was something about me that was like really different. Okay, and not only that, people in the community, when I was three and four and five and six, they said and they saw it. I have several people who wanted to be my godparents, godfather, godmother, all this kind of stuff that children used to have. And then people in the community would let me come into their homes where they wouldn't let any other child on the street come into the home. And I've had my cousins to tell me that I was my our grandmother's favorite. I didn't even know that. I've had teachers who actually embraced. So all along the way, I can see that I had some kind of special quality that gave me, it seemed to be something like a, um, not an upper hand, but if that, for lack of a better word, you know, I was always accepted, always embraced. People were always, life has been like a road map for me, even though I'm born black born a woman in a poverty-stricken community, what they would say, and in a family of 11, and we were, you know, uh, without food many, many, many times, you know. So I'm saying to you, with that, it tells me that I have a, a very high frequency already, which could be in the category of like an indigo child, but in order to maintain that, and, and so what I've done is once I start understanding what frequency and vibration and energy mean, I've been working to continue to upgrade my frequency. So, so when you say how, how, how much scale, on yeah, the back, scale, yeah. I would say if you say that, um, let's say 70% of the people on earth are like negative or participate in some kind of ugly uh, habits or that. I'm just saying. I'm, not about 70, uh, I'm talking about you. Forget on, 70% hey, look, of people. Look, I don't want look, to look, I'm just that. saying. On a scale of 1 to 10, if you want to say 1 to 10, I'm something like an 8. Okay. I'll take that. An 8. Okay. Mm hmm. Thank you so very and much. And that 8 could be a, you know, I mean, depending <laughs> on how you're looking at that 8. 